It's not just another day in your life. Things are changing for the better. At Comcast, we see those changes and we're thinking about how we use technology today to live, work, learn, and play. And we're building for the future now, so we're better prepared for the wants and needs of tomorrow. That's why Comcast is rolling out multi-gig internet speeds to more than 50 million homes and businesses before the end of 2025, making our already industry-leading network even faster, smarter, greener, and more reliable. Over the decades, Comcast has been your partner, working hard to serve your community, and will continue to be your partner. We're expanding our gigabits so you can enjoy the tiny bits that matter most. Hi, I'm Shaletta Brundage. I'm a media personality, podcaster, and a business owner. But my most important role is mom. Three of my beautiful kids have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. When I didn't know who to trust or where to turn, I found Agra. Acra provides home care services to families all over Minnesota. The care is not one size fits all. They know each one of my kids is unique. They listen to what resources we needed and what's best for our family. I've seen my kids grow and thrive with Acra's in-home care. While autism is the most common diagnosis among Acra clients, Acra offers personalized in-home care services for people with disabilities, chronic illnesses, behavioral diagnosis, and mental illness. They work with children, adolescents, and older folks too. Find out more about ACRA at their website, acrahomecare.org. ACRA helps me provide my kids with a better quality of life. They can do it for your family too. Want your boss, Want your boss to put some real action behind the rhetoric when they talk about making your workplace more inclusive? Find out how to hold their feet to the fire and demand diversity on the Diversity Dude podcast. Hello there, and welcome to the Diversity Dude podcast. I'm your host, Flambers Fisher, marriage and family therapist, award-winning author, and national speaker on the topic of multicultural awareness and diversity. And for those of you who are interested in even more positive and encouraging tips and strategies beyond what I share in podcasts like this, then feel free to reach out, reach out and check out my award-winning book, Diversity in Clinical Practice, nationally recognized for the unique way in which it addresses the, the often difficult topic of multicultural awareness and diversity. Designed for more than just therapists, if you're a helping professional in any way, Diversity in Clinical Practice can help you meet the greatest variety of cultural needs possible for those whom you serve, and it's available in paper and audiobook versions for your convenience. And whether it be through my one-on-one -on -one relationship building efforts as a therapist or my informing and empowering efforts as an author or speaker, know that my personal mission is to do my part to improve the world one strengthened relationship at a time. So today I want to share with you a few encouraging words on owning your cultural values and expressions. As I mentioned in a recent podcast, I had the pleasure of hosting my own live interactive webinar last week, and the turnout was awesome with professionals from various fields participating, all making the most of the opportunity to learn how to improve their cultural awareness and competence in order to serve the greatest variety of people possible. And since my trainings are interactive and I provide a unique, shame-free opportunity to welcome any question related to how to apply these principles in their daily personal and professional cross-cultural relationship challenges, I want to share with you one of the questions that someone was bold enough to ask that I believe many of you might be having as well. And it was something like this. Lambers, how do you manage the difficulty with feeling that others are trying to impose their cultural values and attitudes onto you? I mean, inwardly, sometimes I feel irritated at the pressure. Other times I feel helplessly inadequate. I mean, I get that they have a significant amount of cultural pride and that's great for them. But is it wrong if I don't feel passionately about their culture as they think I should or are trying to get me to be? Now, in response to this great question, let me first say to all of you who may feel or have felt something similar. It is very much okay for you not to feel as passionately about someone else's culture as they may feel. And this applies to various cultural values, including racial and ethnic cultural values, gender-based cultural values, political cultural values, religious cultural values, and many more. After all, 
many people feel so strongly about their cultural values because of past positive experiences that they've had and the lessons that they've learned that have reinforced those experiences. If you have not had or shared those same experiences, it's understandable that you would not have the same natural passion as a result. This doesn't mean that you can't learn more today or increase your value now. However, while learning from someone else's experience is great and it may lead to increased empathy, it doesn't automatically lead to similar expressions of passion, and this must be accepted by people on all sides. Difficulty accepting others' lack of similar passion when it's based on past positive experiences can result in what's experienced as pressure, not out of a desire to control you, but instead it could be more accurately described as someone wondering why you're not on what they consider to be the best team around. It just doesn't make sense, and they're trying to help but not realizing what impact is having. In this case, instead of expressing your feeling offended by their disrespectful attempt to control or judge you, acknowledge the value that they have, and if possible, why they value so much, and then respectfully express that you're content or happy where you are and not in need of a change to achieve the same level of happiness that they have for you. In this way, what feels like a potential religious or political or any other type of attempt at conversion it can instead be responded to with an expressed appreciation for their passion and invitation, as well as a respectful decline of their offer. If accepted, it can hopefully result in a relationship of mutual respect for differing preferences and values moving forward. Now, all that being said, sometimes many people feel so strongly about their cultural values because of past negative experiences they had and the lessons that they've learned from those experiences. If you have not shared those negative experiences, it's similarly understandable that you wouldn't have the same natural, passionate defense of that culture as well. This doesn't mean that you can't learn more today or increase your protective value now. However, learning from someone else's experiences can still be great, and it may lead to increased empathy, and it still may not lead to similar expressions of passion, and this must be accepted by people as well. In this case, instead of judging a person for their passion and negativity in defense of their own cultural identification, take the time to learn more about their experiences, what negative experiences that they've had in the past that they're trying to reduce the likelihood of re-experiencing, and instead reassure them that you are not the threat that they fear that you are. After all, in this sense, sometimes what seems like an attempt to pressure you to change who you are in order to value someone else's value is less about you learning to value something new for your own benefit and more about reducing the likelihood of you as being a potential threat to their present or future well-being. Put another way, if I can convince you to be for me or with me, then that makes you one less person I have to worry about being against me. One way you can authentically be yourself while preserving diverse relationships is by showing those you encounter that you are okay with interacting with people from similar as well as differing backgrounds without pressure or coercion either way, nor judgment for those who choose to accept themselves as they are. Whether it be in your home or school or work or community, you are likely to encounter varying degrees of value for one's own cultural identity. Sometimes that value will be expressed healthily, other times it will not. The thing to remember is that there are often legitimate feelings underneath, either way, that need to be reassured and even affirmed. Even as we seek a, healthiest, a healthier way of mutually benefiting of those expressions in ways that feel comfortable whenever, they're, whenever possible. My hope for you is that you will be able to create safe places where you can feel free to express your cultural identification as much or as little as you like. Make clear to others that you see that they're okay with whatever they and are and whoever they feel that they can be, and that while you are always open to learning more about others' cultural identities and expressions, you will decide how much or how little it will be expressed similarly in your own life, in whatever way is comfortable for you, with intentional efforts to still be an asset rather than a threat as opportunities present themselves to do so. And with that, I'll say thanks again for listening to the Diversity to Do podcast. If you have any pressing diversity-related questions that you'd like me to address on an upcoming podcast, or if your organization is in need of a shame-free or empowering guest speaker or training on this often sensitive topic, then feel free to reach out to me directly at www.diversitymadesimple.com. 
And if you know anyone else who can benefit from a positive and encouraging perspective on this often difficult topic of diversity, then feel free to send them a link to this podcast so that they can be encouraged as well. Or share with them my award-winning book, Diversity in Clinical Practice, available at Amazon.com. And as usual, I look forward to addressing as many topics as possible in future podcasts to help you improve as many relationships as possible at work, at home, and in your community. And as always, remember this, you don't need to know everything about everyone in order to have a positive impact on someone. Thank you all for tuning in and have a great day. Tune in each week and find out how to demand and implement diversity at your job. To hear more, check out previous Diversity Dude shows on ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> on this season of Outside Chance, we're about to put the fly and fly fishing. I'm about to prove there's an outdoor activity for everybody. Yeah! This one I'm pretty confident I can make. <laughs> I'll break down gear, costs, and best locations to learn. Holy oh, crap. Whoa! Yeah! Life yeah! is meant to be experienced. <laughs> Did you see that? Join me and find out what you've been missing. When I walked across that stage at my high school graduation, I was excited, but confused about my next step. Then I walked through the doors at Doherty Family College. Doherty Family College is part of the University of St. Thomas. It's a two-year college that lets you earn an associate's degree and puts you on a path to your bachelor's degree. Classes are small, so I have a personal relationship with professors committed to my success. Like the name says, they treat us like family. They call us scholars because they believe we could do anything we put our minds to. They set us up for excellence with free tutoring, and that's not the only thing that's free. Laptops, books, even breakfast and lunch, and bus fare. That's part of the package here at Doherty Family College. It's even free to apply. So do like I did. Go to dfc.stthomas.edu and set up a tour. We'd be excited to welcome you to our family here at Doherty Family College. Racial covenants had structured every aspect of life. Keeping black people in black spaces. Slavery's history is Minnesota's history. So much of working towards racial equity is around telling our own stories. Whether I'm taking the bus or the light rail, I'm on board with Metro Transit. What would I do without my ride? I hope to never find out. Metro Transit is my ticket to get where I need to go. Uptown or downtown, city or suburbs, no hassle. It's my reliable, affordable way to get to work, run errands, visit friends, and then get back home to my neighborhood. With easy to pay fares, I just jump on board and relax while a professional does the driving. This is my time to listen to my music, catch up with my friends on social media, play a game or read, or just chill out and unwind on the way to my destination. But sharing the ride is also about being with folks from my community, headed to school, or traveling to their appointments, or out on the town. Traveling together, we make our road safer and create a healthier environment for everyone. Get on board with Metro Transit. It's your ride, too. I, I am so excited to invite you to a one-of-a-kind experience featuring Isabel Wilkerson, the acclaimed New York Times best-selling author of The Warmth of Other Suns and Cast. You don't want to miss this incredible keynote event, emceed by NPR's Angela Davis and moderated by Chandra Smith-Baker. Wilkerson will share her powerful insights on the impact of cast on American society. Join Teach for America Twin Cities and the Minneapolis Foundation at Northrop on Friday, April 28th at 7 p.m. for an intimate evening of discussion and discovery. Visit Northrop's website or scan the QR code on your screen to secure your tickets today. Be part of something bigger. Join us at Northrop Auditorium for Exposing America's Invisible Scaffolding on April 28th at 7 p.m. You know Shaletta makes you laugh, but did you know Shaletta Brundage can also make you think and boost your business? Media personality, activist, and comedian Shaletta Brundage founded Shaletta Makes Me Laugh to celebrate and share the best of black culture. It's a podcasting platform. You can download 10 weekly podcasts hosted by African-American subject experts at ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. 
ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com is also a production house, creating broadcast quality commercial content. And Shaletta and her team of storytellers create powerful promotional campaigns to get businesses the brand awareness they're looking for. Some of Minnesota's top businesses trust Shaletta, and you can too. Get out the word about your events and products and get in front of communities of color with ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. She's got the power to help your business.